I started upcycling decor I would find at thrift shops years ago and was really motivated by saving money. And that was it. Shopping at thrift stores was way cheaper than buying new, so I would browse the decor aisles and see what I could upcycle to fit our home and style. And although I started upcycling to save money, I quickly realized that there are so many benefits to shopping secondhand and even salvage. In today's episode, I'm sharing my favorite upcycling projects, how I find decor to flip, and how our 112-year-old cottage became my largest upcycling project yet. I started sharing my thrift flip projects and makeovers online in 2018. So it's been five years now, and I've definitely evolved as a designer and content creator online. So it's really important for me that my platforms I use to share my projects evolve with me. I built my website, exomckenna.com with Squarespace, and what I love is that they are always evolving and adding new features for creators like myself and shop owners to better share their projects and products. So go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all the features and start building the way you want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. So just like upcycling home decor for our home that we find at thrift shops is keeping these items from the landfill, Romeo and I were always mindful of other products that we're consuming and the waste that we're creating and just making small adjustments as we go to be better. And I recently came across these liquidless laundry detergent sheets that dissolve 100% during a wash cycle, cycle, like whether it's hot or cold, from Earth Breeze. So right now you can subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash XO to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash XO for 40% off earthbreeze.com slash XO. Thanks to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's episode. My mom and I are taking a trip to France in September that I am so excited about. I I can't even stand it. We really want to go to the flea markets in Paris and then to the south of France. So last year, I got us both subscriptions to Babbel so we could really learn how to have real life conversations in French, hoping that we would get some better deals at the Brocante, which is flea market in French. If, if we knew a little bit more about the language, I felt like we would have a little hand up. Right now you can get 50% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash XO. That's babbel.com slash XO for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. Hello, guys. Welcome back to a new episode of With My Own Two Hands. I hope you guys have been enjoying the podcast. I have definitely become more comfortable with the mic being right in front of my face, multiple cameras on me because we do film this for YouTube as well. Uh, So if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel, I really pride myself in setting up this whole area to film so it looks nice and aesthetically pleasing for you guys. So if you haven't checked it out, (laughs) you can go check it out on YouTube. Uh, And I've just been getting more comfortable with it. I feel like I've come into my own about how um, the podcast will differentiate itself from my other content. If you follow me on YouTube or Instagram or all the things, um, how it is different and how It's just us sitting down chatting about things that we really like. And hopefully in the process, it inspires you guys to transform your house into a home. And it inspires you to just try some new things with your surroundings and or just enjoy and be entertained by it. Um, I have have very much enjoyed it. And I've been through so much with this cottage renovation over the last two years that I've learned a lot. And I've learned, I've, I've learned a lot about myself through this process as well. Um, really coming into my own with my own style and things that I know could work together versus not work together. Um, how to do things. I've obviously upped my skill level in building and woodworking and uh, construction and doing all of those types of the plumbing, electrical. I have upped my skills substantially through a renovation. So it's been um, 
very helpful to my future in renovations <laughs> through this cottage uh, redo. And it's been a lot of fun and we've learned a lot of stuff in the process. But one thing that I did used to do a lot when I first started my YouTube adventure, sharing my projects online, I used to go to the thrift store because I had a really low budget uh, for turning things in, like turning my house into a home. I, I We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, we were really living on savings at the time. And I had just left my corporate job to follow my dream of becoming an entrepreneur and figuring all of that out. And I was spending a lot more time at home. And I didn't have um, a lot of money to kind of like you know, make each space super unique and well-designed and whatever. I was really using what we had and flipping things from the thrift store. And that's really how I started my channel. I would go to the thrift store. I would look at what was there in the home decor section mostly, or like the linen section, the materials. And I would see what was there sitting on the shelf and try and reimagine what they could be. And it really started me on this journey of upcycling. And what I didn't realize at the time, but at the time I was only thinking about my budget. You know, it was a, it was a very selfish thing what I was doing. I was like, well, the thrift store has, you know, some home decor and Romeo was going to the thrift stores a lot looking at clothing. And I was like, well, the thrift stores have like a lot of home decor. Maybe I could, you know, like see if I could make something better. That was really what it was. And that was the driving factor behind it. The more and more I went to thrift stores with Romeo and the more and more I found unique items and it, it started to really push my creativity. It started to really push my brain outside of the box, you know, and thinking like, okay, this used to be a uh, like, like for instance, one that comes to mind is I found these old Kodak carousels and they're there to play, um, to, I think to project in a projector to project pictures so that you could see them and the slides go into this disc. And I found them and I was like, what is someone ever going to use this for? This is going to be trash. This is, this is not ever going to be used for its purpose. We have photos on our phone now we have you know whatever we have like we we have come a long way since the Kodak carousel so what are they going to use them for they're just going to be thrown away and it's just like a, a heap of plastic and at the time I was really in the mode of turning everything into lighting specifically pendant lights and I turned this into a pendant light by using like wood sticks and uh, threading because it had a hole in the middle I could thread a pendant like a string light through it and I put it on this really industrial little rod and I hung them in our bedroom and I was like this is so cool <laughs> and it cost me two dollars you know and it was just like and I got the rest of the supplies or things from the craft store or on Amazon so all in all we had two bedside lamps for like ten dollars or something like it was really inexpensive and they were really cool and they told a story and so there had been a lot of projects before then where I was like what are what is anyone going to use this for and finding weird stuff at the thrift store for really really cheap and I started upcycling them whether that would be furniture that needed to be you know sanded down and painted whether that would be something that could be made into a pendant light or I remember I turned like an old um, little like journal flip, like, like a calendar into a jewelry case, a travel jewelry case, like, like really random projects. But l let me preface my videos and creating those types of videos online really pushed me to do those types of things and to be creative in that sense. But it really did start with me wanting to save money and not having a lot to put into my home, um, but wanting to make a really nice space for Romeo and I to live. Uh, so I would do projects like that almost every other week or so. I was always going to thrift stores. I actually fell in love with going to thrift stores and seeing what people would donate because it was happening every day. And so I would go on the days that they were like, you know, where they would put a lot, a lot of new merchandise out or who, whoever, you know, like I would, I would figure out which my favorite, which of the thrift stores in the area were my favorite thrift stores, you know, it's for different things. And it really became really, really fun. And it became a really big staple, um, in what I shared with you guys in my, my content. 
So I, you can say that I've been upcycling for, uh, for a long time. And really, I think the most basic or not basic, that's a, sometimes that gets a, a bad rap, but not the most uh, traditional or easy to, uh, what am I trying to say, McKenna? Like the common, let's say the common thing to upcycle would be furniture. You know, maybe it is a piece of furniture that needs a really good coat of paint or it needs to be stripped down and restained, new hardware. You can really transform a piece of furniture for a lot less than you can buy it for new, right? It's If it's got a good, you know, it's not damaged and it's got a good foundation, you can really turn it into something special uh, for a lot less. So, that's the most common. I think the less common one I was doing was turning something into a pendant light. And I did that quite frequently, actually. Like I would turn everything into a pendant light. I even turned like a um, seed. We wanted to have this like herb garden in our house. Um, and I found this like seed, old CD holder that was wooden and I made it into an herb garden. I drilled holes in it and like, blah, blah, blah. you know, you could be, get really, really creative. So for me, I saved on money. It was on a budget. I really pushed my creativity. I felt like it made me like just feel really creative. And what I didn't realize then, but I quickly became to realize is that there is so much stuff out there, home decor wise, everything wise, really. There's so much stuff already out there that, gosh, do we really, it made me question, do we really even need new things to be made because <laughs> it's like oh my god there's there's like just like so much stuff that would either be um possibly recycled if it could be or thrown into the landfill and that be, that was like a secondary kind of thought for me because I was new to the thrift store thing I didn't I wasn't exposed to that type of thing I wasn't didn't understand and I think knowledge is power and going through that process I became knowledgeable about all of the products that were out there that could eventually become just discarded and fill the landfill and become waste. And that was a really eye-opening experience for me. Um, and it really drove me to do more upcycling projects and just be more mindful. And I am not a person that would ever sit here and be like, I don't buy anything new. I don't, you know, like everything I buy is second, no at all. And that's not, that's not the truth. I feel like for me, for my personal, I would never tell you guys what to do, but for me personally, it was about a balance. You know, I would, yes, I would obviously shop for new things. Like our couch is new and what I'm sitting on is new, these chairs, but I also have two chairs that I'm about to refinish for our living room or reupholstered, have reupholstered for a living room that I found at the thrift store for $10. And I saved them from being waste and I'm going to put some really pretty fabric on them and they're going to have a new life. And 90% of our home here in Texas in this cottage is secondhand, found at thrift stores, estate sales, flea markets. You guys know if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know I love a good estate sale. I love a good flea market. I love finding unique things. And yeah, 90% 90 of the decor in this this home, 90-95% of the decor in this home is second hand. So I've become, it, whether it was upcycled, like I turned it into something else or it was found and I kept it exactly as it was. And I just cleaned it up maybe, or found a frame and added a pretty piece of art that my mom painted for me or something like that. So what started as saving on budget turned into a love and acknowledgement that there is a lot out there. And my upcycling, my love for upcycling and old things only heightened and only got bigger. Um, so there are lots and lots and lots of benefits of upcycling. And I feel like this cottage, this home, our, our home, our cottage here is was built in 1910. So she is technically antique. She's over 112 years or well, 1910. She could be almost 113 years old now. And she, not knowing it when I bought her, not knowing when I started this whole journey of renovating her with my own two hands, not really understanding what I was even getting into, I did not know that she would then become my largest upcycling project ever. And through this process, I have learned to value 
salvaged material and not thinking everything is just trash and not thinking that everything is just supposed to be discarded. And every other offer that this house on it had on it, they were going to tear it down. So everything about this house would have become waste, would have become discarded. Everything from um, the boards, the studs, the trim, the beadboard, all the things would have just gone into a giant pile, been hauled off and whatever. And I didn't know it in the beginning, but quickly, I, you know, I was kind of in every room of this cottage and ready to transform it into whatever it was going to become. So like, let's say for instance, our kitchen renovation, it used to be the bathroom. It, this was a two bedroom. Well, ugh, that's generous. It was really a one bedroom, one bath house when we bought it. Um, it had a lot of odd rooms in it, but this was the only bathroom and it was very large and very tall. Well, that space I wanted for our kitchen. So when I was in the bathroom demoing out, now there were some things that did become trash. I wasn't going to keep the plastic tub. I put it on the street and said free and someone came and got it. I hope they used it. Um, there, the toilet I did keep, but then later broke. So that was a problem. I had no intention on breaking it. I really wanted to keep it. Um, and there, I kind of was looking around the room and I was like, okay, oh, I gotta, I gotta demo this room, you know? And I was kind of feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And I was like, ooh, I was like, this room is covered in beadboard. So we had it tested and it, there was no lead present. So I could really like demo most of the stuff in the house myself. Um, and so I started doing it and I, I understood how to get off the beadboard pieces. Now, it's not like the beadboard that you can go and beadboard is like wood that has a beaded uh, detail down the center of it. And when they fit together, it adds a lot of texture to walls. There's two types of beadboard when you go to the hardware store. One could be like a whole sheet of it that's already kind of like pre put together. And you could always tell that that looks, I feel like if you put it into a larger space, you can always really tell that that looks fake. There was a, I was in like a restaurant or somewhere around here and they had had it on the ceiling and I could see the seams. And it, it just didn't look like real wood. And it's, it's kind of like a plywood almost, real thin. Or you can buy the beadboard boards. And at the hardware store last time I went, um, an eight foot board was around $8 a piece. So when I looked around this, this bathroom, I saw lots of $8 dollar signs with every board. Once I figured out I could take it off, and I was like, oh, that actually came out. There's three nails, one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom, and they all hook together, like they're tongue and groove, so they all hook together. I could essentially get these off and reuse them. So that's what I did. I took, by hand, I took off each piece of beadboard, put it into a pile, and saved it. Put it back there in the shed. And we have since reused that beadboard, every bit, I every bit of beadboard that I saved, I reused. I reused that beadboard here behind me in these, that's the back of these, be, these bookshelves that are behind me in our living room. So I put them on the wall before I built the, the shelving and the cabinetry on the bottom and it gave it a nice texture behind it. So that was one way that we reused it. I also reused it in the coffee pantry. It's the back wall in the coffee pantry. I also reused it in the dining room ceiling. So when we eventually took down these walls to the bathroom, it it real it kind of like uh, showed a difference in ceiling texture. So in the bathroom and their previous dining room, which was on the right side, it had all beadboard ceilings. But on the left side of this bathroom, it was just shiplap. They had never put up the beadboard detail or just had done shiplap. They had done something different. Then they had like a drop ceiling on top of that, like those acoustic ceiling tiles that we took down. So I used the rest of the beadboard from the bathroom up on the ceiling to make the ceiling look all one continuous, like it was all one space. And then to camouflage and cover the uh, kind of where the walls used to be, there were they left these two spaces. So I put some, I, I DIY'd some beams to go up on the ceiling and camouflage that hole. And so you couldn't see it anymore. 
So that was one, one material, one salvaged material that I took from one space and reused and reimagined in different areas. We sanded it down. We it, put, um, painted it different colors. Obviously the, the ceiling in there is gray mist. Uh, back here is millstone gray. It has a totally different life, but I'd already paid for it. You know, I'd already bought it with the house. It was right there. Someone could have said, this is trash. It's going to be so much easier. And it would be so much easier to buy new. It would be, it would go together better. It would, sl the tongue and grooves would work better. You wouldn't have to take out all of the nails. You wouldn't have to pry every piece off and then redo it up there. You wouldn't have to sand it down. Yes, it would be easier. But it didn't become trash. I didn't have to pay $8 a board. And when you think about like the size of our kitchen, I can put that math on the, uh, like I, I can put it about on the screen, um, but I would have to figure out that space. Oh, we must've went through, let's say ballpark. We went through like 50, let's say 50, 50 boards. The ceilings take up a lot more material than you think. Let's say 50 boards and those, those boards were just eight foot. Let's say we needed two. Let's say we needed a hundred boards. That's $800 in material. Now that's a ballpark. I would have to do the, the real math, but that's $800 in material that I saved, but it was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a, it was a lot, a lot of work, but I am proud to say that that was the material from the old bathroom that we kept in the house. And it was the same width and everything that was a hundred years old. It's just super special. So for me, I value that. For me, I just, I felt like it was, it was more special, um, that way. So that was just one of the projects that we did in the house and what we salvaged. Um, then once I figured out like, oh, wow, I can actually reuse so much more in this house than I thought. Um, and really in the beginning, again, it was about budget. It was about saving everything that I possibly could. So another thing that I did is I walked through the house I took a picture of each door. So front door, all the doors entering all of the rooms. I measured them. I put them on a, like a document together so that I could see the measurements. I could see the different thing. I could, I could see it all. And I started to reposition them in the house. So when I designed the new floor plan and where the new doors were going to go, when we were going to build the addition, I took into consideration all of these odd. Now all the doors were different. There was no rhyme or reason to why they put them in the house the way they did. They were all different sizes. Some had glass, some were paneled. Um, they were all a similar style. So they really complimented and it, it mattered to me that they were in the house and doors aren't cheap. So I was like, okay, we're gonna, I mean, you could spend like a thousand dollars on a door. Now that's a little on the high side, but you could, I mean, doors are, can be expensive. So I started the journey of redesigning them all into the house and they have all gone back in and I have a few more that need, we don't have doors on some of the rooms in the house because I do them when I get to that room and doing that makeover, but I have a few more and we were able to reuse all of the doors in the house. I started sharing my Thriftlet projects and makeovers online in 2018. So it's been five years now, and I've definitely evolved as a designer and content creator online. So it's really important for me that my platforms I use to share my projects evolve with me. I built my website, exomckenna.com with Squarespace. And what I love is that they are always evolving and adding new features for creators like myself and shop owners to better share their projects and products. I feel like a lot of you listening are a lot like me. Either you would love to share your passion for home decor through blogging and content creation, or you DIY your own products or source vintage decor that you need a solid platform to create and sell on. And with Squarespace, you can easily display posts from your social profiles directly on your website, easily sell your products with a built-in online store, and cultivate and, and engage your community directly on your Squarespace website. So go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all the features and start building the way you want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. 
So just like upcycling home decor for our home that we find at thrift shops is keeping these items from the landfill, Romeo and I were always mindful of other products that we're consuming and the waste that we're creating and just making small adjustments as we go to be better. And I recently came across these liquidless laundry detergent sheets that dissolve 100% during a wash cycle, cycle, like whether it's hot or cold, from Earth Breeze and was like, what? Well, I mean, how does that even happen? I, I've never heard of that before. So I had to try them. Uh, and they look like they're the dryer sheets, like the dryer sheets that you throw into the dryer. And the first thought that I had is I don't have to lug that heavy plastic container home from the store and then struggle with that heavy plastic container to add detergent to the washer. And then it got me thinking, I'm like, you're right, these large plastic containers just end up in the landfill. And I could go on and on about all the positives and all the benefits of Earth Breeze. The packaging is biodegradable and plastic free and delivered straight to your door. You don't have to go to the store. The sheets are hypoallergenic and dermatologist tested for sensitive skin, which is a huge plus for Romeo. They're compatible with the high efficiency dryers, but do they work? Yes, you still get a powerful clean that's tough on stains and odors. So don't just take my word for it. You can seriously try this out for yourself risk-free. If you don't like it, Earth Breeze will give you a full refund, no questions asked, and no return necessary. So right now you can subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash XO to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash XO for 40% off earthbreeze.com slash XO. Thanks to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's episode. My mom and I are taking a trip to France in September that I am so excited about. I, I can't even stand it. We really want to go to the flea markets in Paris and then to the south of France. So last year, I got us both subscriptions to Babbel so we could really learn how to have real life conversations in French, hoping that we would get some better deals at the Brocante, which is flea market in French. If, if we knew a little bit more about the language, I felt like we would have a little hand up. Communication is really key to fully experience a culture. And with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. So you can start having a real life conversation in as little as three weeks. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, you can get 50% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash XO. That's babbel.com slash XO for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. Something else that I did... Uh that took me a long, two, two projects, two salvaging projects that took me a long time was that we have old, 113 year old double hung windows, meaning and double hung windows mean that the window is like two sashes. So like there's one on the, and a sash is like the, let's say the window itself. There's a window on the top and a window in the model in the bottom and they lock in the center, lock together. So I can open the bottom window, I can raise the bottom window up, or I can lower the top window down. And they have a weight system inside the trim, uh, and this is how they were done. So they're all original. Well, of course, you know, I like original stuff. So I took it upon myself to restore and put new glass into all the windows that needed new glass because some were broken. And we ended up breaking some when we were trying to restore and like clean up the, the windows. Um, so I restored every window. I sanded them down, took off layers and layers and layers of old paint. I re repainted them. I laid new glass. I re um, uh, sealed them. You know, like I'm blanking on the word right now that I use, but it's the a seal. Uh, no, what, what am I trying? Which? I'm blanking on the, I don't know why. I, th I think I blocked out that project, but I, I I redid all of the glass. Now, just in the glass in general, we saved $8,000 in all of our windows. We have over 40 windows in the whole house and they were going to charge me $100 per pane. And some of the pane, some of the windows have four panes. It was like a lot. It was like over $8,000. And then just reusing the windows in general, like keeping them, 
was a huge thing because windows are expensive, but where old windows falter is they're not energy efficient. And something I plan on doing, but have not done yet, but planned on doing before the summertime, which I hope I have time and I should prioritize it, is actually getting the windows filmed. So like basically think of like a car tent, like a car window tent. It's a similar thing effect but it doesn't tint it it's just a eco-friendly kind of like uh, like film that goes on the windows and helps save on energy costs making the window more efficient even though the window itself isn't efficient because it's just a, a pane of glass you know that was a big project that took me like eight months to do the other project that could be consider- considered <laughs> salvaged, I guess, is that we wanted to restore all of the floors in the house. That was also a huge undertaking, picking up linoleum off of it, all the things. So that was another thing that we restored. It it was um, costly in equipment to restore ourselves, but they came out beautifully. Um, just the raw longleaf pine that's in this house is just something I definitely, definitely, definitely wanted to restore. And in some places in the house, I actually had to, um, patch or repair. There were a por- there was a portion in the old bathroom that I think had water damaged at one point and they had just replaced it with some plywood. And so I had to salvage wood from, Fox Run, which was another property that we looked at buying um, that my parents actually purchased, had an old falling down home on it. So I went in there and saved everything that I could because it was free and it matched mine. And in this area, if I could get my hands on longleaf pine, I was going to do it. Uh, So we we got it um, and patched some things that we needed to patch and then also bought some new flooring for the addition to match that old flooring. So Those were some of the major, major projects um, that just in the house materials we were able to use and reimagine. And even though they weren't staying in the same place, like we didn't keep the bathroom that was oddly shaped and really, really tall and impractical, we were able to keep most of the materials and reuse them. I even kept the vanity. I still have the vanity that was on the wall, like the medicine cabinet. I still have it. Um... That's pretty cool. I, I want to do something special with that. It's just out in the shed. But we were able to do some some really um, cool things with all of the, the material. Also something that I did save, even though we did kind of um, move around the walls in some parts of the house, was keep all the trim. I took off everything, every little bullseye, corner detail, every casing, every baseboard. We eventually had to create knives what they call it is that they had to match my profile of the baseboards and casings in order to make new material to match that because we needed more material we didn't have enough even with what I salvaged Uh, so they didn't I don't even think that they put the same trim in the other rooms that they had that we tore down. I don't know. There was It was a little bit eclectic in this house when we bought it. You know, lots of things over the years, just uh, so interesting to me. I, I absolutely love it. So those were all of the material. There's a, there's a great, uh, great, great places that you can visit to look at salvaged material that's already already been demoed from homes. You can find them at flea markets. Uh, you can find just salvaged places um, and re- look at the wood details and things. And it's really cool to reuse uh, some of that stuff. There's also been tons of things that I've continued to find at flea markets, thrift stores, estate sales that need to be upcycled. And I could reuse for, you know, our home, like actual, like real substantial pieces uh, that we could find and and reimagine. So one of those things I'm actually sitting by right now is our vintage mantle. I don't know how old it is. I know it's old. I don't quite know any of the history on it. There's no like the markings or anything. Um, I got it from the flea market from um, a vendor that we love, Robert. He had it, he was going to have it stripped, but didn't know what kind of like wood was underneath and never got around to it. So I got this mantle for like 200 and something dollars. 
I love it. I love all the detail. I'm actually still working on adding like some aging techniques because I painted it um, the same color as the wall because the wood I didn't think was going to strip really well. And I'm also finishing out the inside. So this was one major um, thing that was upcycled that just needed um, to be kind of clamped and fixed and glued. I need to fix it a little bit and then also paint it and add in some like aging techniques to it. A second one that I absolutely love, like still, is I was looking for, well, I have two of them actually. I was looking for furniture pieces that could be transformed into vanities for the bathroom. And I wanted something that looked like furniture. I didn't want like a built-in cabinetry for our vanities in, in the bathroom. So in the guest bath, I did that one first. I was specifically looking for a piece of furniture that I could transform into a vanity that was about three foot wide, about 36 inches. That was really what I was looking for because it was a smaller space because the guest bed, the guest bathroom is a little smaller. So I looked at a couple of different ones, really trying everything, like trying to reimagine anything that I saw at a flea market or, or wherever. And I came across this old phonograph cabinet from 1901 it was built and it had uh it wasn't solid wood in it was solid wood legs but there was a veneer type material on the doors and the sides but if I sanded it lightly I could transform the color it was pretty beat up and obviously a, an old phonograph cabinet it's how they correct me if I'm wrong I haven't had a lot of experience with phonographs but I'm pretty sure it's the way that you listen to the radio is that wrong? Should I Google? Maybe I should. A phonograph, also called a record player instrument for producing sounds by means of the vibration or needle. Uh, phonograph, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so it was like an old school record player? Main purpose. What was the main purpose of a phonograph? Yeah, the goal of the phonograph was to record sounds and then replay sounds. So it recorded and played. That's so interesting. I didn't know that. Well, our cabinet, our cabinet didn't come with the phonograph itself. So it was just the cabinet portion. It wasn't like the the phonograph, like it kind of looks like it has a big horn. And I guess that's how it played and recorded sound. That's really cool. Uh, so it didn't have that, but it did have this kind of humped look on the top of it. So I was able to, so I couldn't really use it with the hump. So I had to make the top flat. So once I did that and I was able to lightly sand everything, get it like all the damage, it was in bad shape. So I got all that uh, sanded down. I was able to sand, uh, I was able to stain it, but the veneer kind of took the stain in an interesting way, more of a streaked way, but it looked really good. Uh, I still really liked it. And then I got new handles for it. And then when we had our granite cut, I got the handles on Etsy. Actually, they were antique, so they were salvaged as well. And then the only thing new about that that thing was also the granite. Uh, so when we had our um, island cut for the kitchen, I had them use the portion that they cut out for the uh, farmhouse sink. It was 36 inches. And this phonograph ended up being like 32 inches, I think. Uh, so they were able to use the piece that they cut out of the island for the vanity. And it's so cool. I love it. I think about it all the time. I also, on the side of it, it sits next to the toilet. And when we were in Amsterdam, which is so, so crazy to say, like that was my first time to Europe. So I, <laughs> it's just so cool. I went, we went on a tour of Europe, Romeo and I, and we were in Amsterdam and we found a flea market. Of course, we go to a foreign country and immediately look for a flea market. It was so cool. And I have so many regrets about things that I didn't buy from there. And I thought we were, you know, I thought we were going to go to so many more along our trip, but we didn't end up finding any. We just happened to be there on that weekend that the flea market was there. And I found this um, toilet paper holder that said toilet on it. And it was brass and wood. Beautiful. I put it on the side of the vanity. She's so cute. I love her. And she's upcycled. And I bought that original phonograph cabinet for 40 bucks. A vanity would have cost me a lot more than that. And I had to do some work to it and put the, you know, new hardware and, and the granite and the sink I actually salvaged too. The sink I found at a flea market in Canton for $19. No, it was $19, but he gave me a discount. It was like $17 or something. The sink, it was identical to a sink that I was going to pay full price for. I think it was like $90 or so. So all in, I saved, 
on money I saved on sal- like keeping it from the landfill if that was where it was going to go. I mean, who was going to use a phonograph cabinet for it unless they were going to turn it into something else? And it's just such a cool, cool piece. Um, there's been so many other things that I have found for this house that I have upcoming projects to do. I have another vanity that I found from a vintage market, actually. Uh, it's like a buffet table, and it was enough to fit two sinks in it. So I'm going to turn it into the vanity for our primary bathroom back there. I have a tub that's also vintage, a vintage clawfoot tub that used to be blue that I had recoded and redone, salvaged, old tub. I have two chairs back there that I'm going to be reupholstering for the living room that I got for $10 at the thrift store. I have a couch back there, a tufted vintage couch that I actually found on the street that was actually going to the landfill, Uh, but it needs a lot of work. I don't, I just saved it because I was like, maybe one day I can do something on it. Uh, But someone had like painted it with like chalk paint or something. (laughs) They did something weird to it. So those are some of the things that come to mind um, that we, I get to upcycle and reuse. I also find tons, all of the hardware for our cabinets in our kitchen were all found at estate sales. Um, and I feel like I'm the only one in town that ever looks for hardware because I always find I'm the only one that ever buys it. Um, but it's just it's such a cool thing to upcycle, even when you think something can't be reused again and maybe it would be trash. Like I could have thought that about our front porch. Our front porch was in really bad shape when we bought the cottage. It was severely water damaged. The floor was really rotten and it was built on two by fours. So it wasn't going to last much longer. And they, I had three porch posts out there in the front and they were rotting about two inches up on the bottom. So they wouldn't have been tall enough to reuse again. And I don't know, they were compromised in a lot of ways to hold structure like that. So I was like, I can use these for something I know. So I took, when we demoed the porch, I took them to the back. And one of the things that I thought about was reusing them as the uh, kind of like edge of our island because I was building our island from scratch. So I cut down a portion of these porch posts and used them three along the front of our island to create bar seating. And they're so cool. Like that's such a cool thing that was originally part of the house in some way that I could have thrown away, but I didn't. I I did. And, and there are three more, like another section of those porch posts were still in good shape. So I was like, oh, let me save these. These could be like really cool, like chunky candle holders, like wooden ones. And it's very similar to the candle holders, the stone, these are stone, not wood, but stone candle holders that I just put on our outdoor dining area. Um, they kind of give me that look and that feel. I'm like, these are so cool. You know, so you could think that I'm a hoarder. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you could really think that I save things for absolutely no reason, but I'm really not. I... I save things for a specific period of time. And if I haven't figured out what to do with it yet, I go ahead and donate or send it to the appropriate destination. You know, I'm really, really, really not a hoarder in any way. Uh, So I think I think I'd do that that uh, a little bit smart, if you will. So what I think what I, I think a lot about now is really paying attention to the end goal of what I'm trying to create. So if I have a room and like just recently, I just found a coffee table at a flea market that I'm going to be putting in the the living room. And I go about an upcycling project thinking about where I'm going to put it. I don't just upcycle to upcycle, you know, like I used to. And I, I, I got kind of exhausted by it. I didn't think, you know, what started as creativity and like turning, you know, this old CD case into an herb garden. I I quickly stopped doing that because I was like, oh, I wanted to have like a permanent home. Like that's cool. But like, I want to do, I think I wanted to up my, my game a little bit. Uh, so I recently found a, a coffee table that I've been working on and sanding down and just kind of restoring for the, the living room. And I got it for a hundred dollars and I think I'm going to add some brass detail to it. 
I go about every situation, every, every upcycling project thinking about its end goal. Like maybe I need to turn something into a specific style or match my style better. So I'm thinking about this coffee table in terms of like, how can I make it fit the space and my vibe a little more because it has a great base. It just needs a little bit something extra. And so when I go to the flea markets or the thrift stores, I'm thinking about a spot that I need something and looking and keeping my eyes open for things that could be turned into it. I was even looking for a coffee table. I was having a hard time finding one. I was even looking for, Drew Lone Fox actually gave me this idea because it's something that he might do, or maybe he just gave me the idea. He said, if you find a table that you really like and you can cut the legs and then it can become a coffee table. Because I was having a hard time finding a coffee table that was big enough. Like everything that I was finding was really uh, uh, just delicate in a sense. I needed it to feel beefy. So when you're looking for, if you're looking for a specific place and you're looking for a specific room or a specific item, uh, kind of like write it in your phone. And when you're going on adventures, you can be like, oh, maybe this could work for this. You know, like maybe <laughs> this old phonograph cabinet can become a vanity or maybe, you know, maybe I can just reupholster something. And not every upcycling project has to be extreme. It doesn't have to be transformed into a completely different item like a phonograph cabinet into a vanity. It could just need some little cleaning up or a, a coat of paint or you don't need to transform something so drastically to to upcycle something. So I didn't know going into this cottage that it would be the biggest upcycling project that I've ever done in life, but it has really opened my eyes to how much is out there and how it sh- it should and for myself should be always the place I start before venturing into um, maybe buying something that's new on the market. Uh, I think it allows me to tell more stories. Um, not that new stuff, ha- I'm not devaluing new stuff at all. I'm, I very much shop new too. But when I look at my island, I think about the porch posts you, you know, that used to be on the front of this house. And um, when I think about that vanity, I think about where I found it and it being a phonograph cabinet. And um, when I find all of these pieces, I remember where I got them from. And it, it really is a story to tell. So when someone comes to the house, or even I think about like one day selling this cottage and getting to share the really unique things that have been brought back in. Um, I even built the, I'm looking at over there in the kitchen and I even built out these uh, boxed windows that was paying homage and um, kind of like remembering an entryway that was to this space that I'm actually sitting in right now. And there was a wall that I wanted to take down because the room was separated into a foyer and a smaller room. And so when I took that down, they had it had two closets in that wall as well. And so the opening had this beautiful rich tone beadboard and wainscoting. Uh, and I salvaged each piece of that to redo that same look in the kitchen and give kind of like paying homage to that room. And so I just like, I could sit here and talk about upcycling and stories that I have to tell about all these different things, like until I'm blue in the face, because it really truly became through this house, it became something that was so like ingrained in me almost. Like I love looking for upcycling projects. I love looking for old, you know, things. I'm even on the hunt for some uh, gate pulls that are that are vintage, but having, sometimes it's just too hard. Um, I'm having a hard time. I need four of them <laughs> that look the same. So I'm having a hard time finding them. So some ways, no, it doesn't always work, but in ways that it could, it could be a really, really special way to transform your house into a home. And I'm kind of like living, breathing, breathing, living, breathing proof of that. Um, So if you enjoy upcycling or if you want to get into it or you want to see any of the projects that I've worked on uh, for this cottage and the way that I've reused and and reimagined salvaged materials, I'm an upcycled some projects, definitely head over to YouTube. I've got playlists of different things that you can watch. You can even watch me 
take it from one thing to the other and transform it where I put it in my house and how we applied it um, and techniques to, you know, restoring or painting furniture, if that's what you're going to look at. So I've got tons and tons of resources there um, through the eyes of just a friend doing the project and um, sharing her project with you. Um, not not tutorial based at all. So if that interests you, definitely head over to YouTube. I hope this inspired you to think about upcycling um, and old things a little differently. And not everything old needs to be trash and not everything used needs to be waste. And there really, it really is beauty in saving, recycling, I think now what makes me really happy is I think that now more than ever, maybe through my own content or my like other content creators online or other people uh, redoing older homes, it's becoming so much um, more kind of ex uh, common, like it's, it's possible and it's okay um, and it's a good thing to upcycle and salvage. Like if I see something cool in the street, I would probably pick it up like for free, you know, and I feel like like when I was little, that was kind of taboo in a sense. And th that wasn't done. So it makes me happy that this is upcycling and um, secondhand is becoming so much more of a thing that that happens in the world. And that's just so good because there's plenty of stuff for all of us. Trust me, like so much stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I can't wait to see what you guys upcycle. If you're watching on the YouTube video, because we also filmed this for YouTube uh, on the With My Own Two Hands podcast YouTube channel, please comment. Let me know what you guys have upcycled, like your favorite projects or what you look for all the time uh, when you're going out or something that you're on the hunt for. Um, I'm always keeping my eyes peeled for things. Uh, so if you have any ideas for me too. If you see something that could be transformed into something else, let me know and comment what you guys would. I always want to hear what you guys want to hear on the podcast. Uh, we have a lot of fun episodes coming up soon. Um, more episodes with my mom. And then um, when I'm back in California, more episodes. I definitely want to have my realtor on it. I think she would have amazing things to say. And of course, Drew, if you didn't watch the last episode with Drew from Lone Fox, definitely go check it out. We talked about, I, I, definitely you hear things that you have never heard before, like how he come up, came up with his name, the struggles that we have, have, have experienced and just our relationship over the years. So definitely head and check it out. And I will see you guys in two weeks for another video. And of course, on my other channels for more and more content. My little doggie has been sitting here the whole time, sound asleep. She's being very good girl. Very good. Now I have to get up. Bye, guys.